Hello, and welcome to another episode of me doing weird stuff on BG3 and uploading it to YouTube. Today, we have a build video, which I don't normally do, so we're going to try and get through this as painlessly as possible, because I think most build videos I see are kind of boring, so we're going to try and get through it and then actually get to showing it off uh, as quick as we can. So, what is the build we're going to be doing today? It is going to be a Retribution Tank. It is actually inspired by a gimmicky build on Larian's last game on Divinity Original Sin 2, where they had a stat called Retribution, and it allowed you to just reflect damage back at people when they attacked you. Uh, now, Baldur's Gate 3 is based on D&D, &D, and there is no mechanic like that, but we're going to make it happen anyway. So we're going to make a tanky build who is going to reflect damage back. So obviously, as a tanky build, we're going to start off level 1 as Sorcerer. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. All right, so Sorcerer, right? Cantrips uh, doesn't really matter because we are actually not going to be taking that many levels in Sorcerer, but we do want level 1 to be Sorcerer. So I'm going to take some uh, spells here, some cantrips that where my modifier doesn't really affect them at all. Uh, Blade Ward could actually be useful. We're going to take that one there. All right, as far as spells, once again, we are not going to be taking a lot of levels in Sorcerer. We are not going to have a very high charisma, so we actually don't want stuff here that needs to use our spellcasting modifier. So we're going to take that out. We can keep Magic Missile. It's solid. doesn't get impacted by our stats at all. It's just a solid spell. Uh, we're going to take Shield, just in case we need it. We probably won't with this build. We actually want to get hit with this build. Uh, but we're going to take shield for those rare instances where our mechanics aren't set up properly and we need to not get hit. Uh, we are going to take Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. That is actually required for this build. And it is specifically required... I can't unclick it. It is specifically required that we take the White Dragon Ancestry because we want Armor of Agathis. Armor of Agathis is going to tie this entire build together. Alright, so if you read the description right there... Armor of Agathis, you gain 5 temporary hit points and deal 5 cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack, and it lasts until a long rest. Now, as long as you have the hit points when you get hit, it will reflect it. So let's say I have 5 hit points, I can hit for 4 damage, I still have 1 left, I still reflect back the damage. If I have 5 temporary hit points and I get hit for 7 damage, it still reflects it as long as I have the hit points when I get get hit. doesn't matter if they're there after I get hit. It matters if they're there when I, the hit occurs. All right, so it's going to reflect that back. Now, this doesn't sound like a whole lot of reflection damage. This doesn't sound like you're going to kill anything by reflecting back five cold damage. And once the five temporary hit points goes away, it's not going to do anything anyway. But we can upcast this. Every level that you upcast this, it gives you five more temporary hit points and deals five more cold damage. So if you upcast this at level six, it gives you 30 temporary hit points. And so long as you have any of them left, you will reflect back 30 cold damage on the person attacking you. All right, and we're going to do everything we can on this build to take advantage of that. Uh, as far as the uh, facial markings here from your Draconic draconic ancestry pick whatever you prefer it does not make a difference at all now the majority of this build is as i said three times now not going to be sorcerer all right it's actually going to be mostly wizard the reason we pick sorcerer first all right first off wizards can't get armor back this which is weird but they can't uh the only other way to get this uh would be i believe warlock there might be another way but to my knowledge warlock and sorcerer that's the only way to get this at level one all right now, we are going to be primarily wizard, so we do want a high intelligence. We're going to crank that up, get a little bonus right there. Um, and then we are going to be getting hit a lot, and the reason we went sorcerer at first level, cannot take at any other point in the leveling process, is because we get constitution proficiency. All right, we are going to be maintaining concentration on stuff, and we do not want to lose it. Uh, next most important stat is probably going to be dexterity, just so we can get high initiative. And then I don't want to get crowd controlled, so we don't want negative stats there. You don't need your strength anywhere. It's nice to have some carrying capacity, and that's about it. Now, with the feats that we're going to be taking, we can actually... Uh, actually, no, that's, that's going to stay there. Never mind. Yeah, we're going to have a 9 strength by the end, or whatever. Doesn't really matter. I don't like odd numbers in our builds, but it is what it is. I don't want any of these going lower than what they are. So, uh, skill proficiencies, pick whatever you want. Sure, we can keep this. Sure, those are fine. Whatever. Um, yeah, so that's level one. Uh, you definitely need Armor of Agathis, White Dragon subclass. Uh, 
I like shield, I like magic missile, they don't use your charisma, so we took them. Same with these cantrips, none of them use our charisma, which is why we took them. Alright, moving on to level 2. Level 2, alright, now the game says sorcerer level 2, we're not doing that. We are only taking one level in sorcerer, so we're going to click that little add class right there. And like I said, most of the build is wizard, so at level 2 we are going to start taking classes in cleric. All right, so cleric cantrips. Again, we are not going to be using wisdom. We are going to be using intelligence. So you want to pick cantrips that don't actually use your spellcasting modifier. So I'm just going to go with uh, these three. They all just buff stuff, right? Resistance, guidance, and uh, thaumaturgy. All just good. I did take uh, proficiency on performance. I don't know. I took them on some charisma-based ones. This might help if you use them for dialogue. Uh, subclass. It matters a little bit. Um, the main thing is we need heavy armor proficiency. That is the main reason that we are taking Cleric here. Which means you can take Life Domain, you can take Tempest Domain, or you could take War Domain. And there's a few benefits to each of them. Life Domain, the benefits don't matter. Ignore it. You don't want to take Life Domain for this particular build. It matters in other builds, not for this one. Tempest Domain and War Domain are really the two you're going to be looking at. And the reason for that is you're going to be in melee range a lot. Like, that's the point of this build, is to get into melee range. Um, so, because of that, this subclass feature where you can attack with a bonus action could be useful. You do only get three of them per day, and we're not taking any more cleric classes, so that won't ever go up. And they do recharge in a long rest, which means it's not always available. Um, so I don't particularly like this one a whole lot. But it is an option, and it does give you heavy armor all right, and shields. Uh, I think clerics just get shields regardless. Tempest Domain, however, is what we're going to go with. You can't take War Domain. I'm going to say Tempest is better for this build. The reason for that is we get this reaction right here, Wrath of the Storm. When we get hit by something, we can deal 2d8 lightning or thunder damage to them. Uh, they can make a saving throw and then take half. And I'm pretty sure this uses your wisdom, so they're probably going to take half. But it's still damage that's going to bounce back. With the way this build works, we're going to almost always want to choose lightning damage unless the creature is uh, weak against thunder damage. Alright. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go Tempest Domain. You can pick War Domain, you can pick Life Domain if you want, but uh, Tempest Domain is probably the best for this build. Deity, pick whoever you want. If you're going to Romance uh, Shadowheart, take Saloon. It gives you more dialogue options. It's fun. I don't really think any of the other ones matter much. Uh, maybe you can have some dialogue options with Anthara if you pick Lolf. Uh, maybe Mistra will give you some stuff with Gale. Uh, Tur, maybe with early game uh, Karlak. I don't know. There's a lot of options here. Pick whatever you want. Uh, because of the friend who told me to do this in real life, uh, I'm going to go with Corellian Lorethian as my deity. And then for the spells, uh, this one is actually important. Uh, even though, I mean, you can swap these out. You're a cleric, you can swap them out at any point that you want, as long as you're not in combat. We are going to want to create and destroy water, because when this target is wet, they're going to take double damage from lightning and cold damage. And we are going to be reflecting back lightning damage, and we're going to be reflecting back cold damage. So making our targets wet is perfect for this build. Alright. Moving on to level 3, it is at this point now that we dump all of our remaining levels into Wizard. Alright, so now our cantrips are actually going to be affected by our Intelligence modifier, so they are going to actually matter. I'm going to go with Ray of Frost and Shock and Grasp, because again, we are going to be trying to make our targets wet, so these will be dealing double damage. So even though they deal 1d8 instead of 1d10, they will be outpacing Firebolt if we make targets wet first. And then um, the rest really don't matter too much. Uh, Mage Hand could be useful uh, in certain niche situations. Minor Illusion can help you set stuff up, though I usually prefer having a Bard perform, but you know, you can do some stuff with that. Uh, there's not a whole lot of enemies that heal in the game, but if you are up against something that you know is going to heal, Bone Chill can help negate that. Uh, Acid Splash just kind of sucks. And Poison Spray is nice for those weird situations where somebody is really close to you, but not quite close enough for Shock and Grasp, but that happens so rarely, it, it, who cares. Uh, I'm going to go with Mage Hand. You can pick whatever you want, but I would definitely take Shock and Grasp and Ray of Frost. As for our spells, uh, because, again, we're going to be making targets wet, I'm going to go with Ice Knife and I'm going to go with Chromatic Orb. 
Uh, Lightning, Thunder, and Cold will all work great here. Thunder, for some reason, does an extra D8 of damage. I have no idea why to this day. Like, it's always confused me why. I don't know. Uh, Find Familiar is always pretty nice. You know, just an extra little guy, does a little bit of damage. I particularly like summoning the Raven because they can blind people. Um, it gets a little bit less consistent as you level up, but it's still pretty good. And then just some outside of combat quality of life stuff. Uh, Featherfall Jump and Long Strider are always nice to have, and nothing else on here is super beneficial that we're going to keep long term. Anything else here, like a crowd control spell like Sleep or Tasha's, we would get rid of it, win a couple of level ups. These are useful throughout the whole game, as long as somebody in your party has them. Um, and yeah, we can change these out. I don't know why we have higher level stuff on here already. Oh, because I know them and I have the spell slots, right. Um, spoiler alert on some of them. Uh, sure, we'll go with that right there. Uh, I think I'm just going to skip the prepared spells until we hit level 12 here. Now, level 2. We are going to pick Abjuration as our subclass. This is the thing that kind of pulls the whole build together. All right, We've got Reflect Damage from Armor of Agathis. We've got Reflect Damage from our Cleric subclass, probably. Um, and the Armor of Agathis needs us to still maintain those temporary hit points. Abjuration subclass allows us to maintain those temporary hit points, and also as a primarily a wizard to not die in melee combat. So, Abjuration... Um, I'll explain it when we get into showing off the build. Basically, it gives you a shield that negates damage. You will take no damage by the end of the game with this. It starts off a little weak, but by the end game, you are, I don't want to say unkillable, but its I would be surprised if you find a way to let this character die in the end game. All right. Uh, as for more spells, pick whatever you feel like. Um, yeah, I'm just going to pick some random stuff here and skip the prepared because we'll swap them all out at the end. Alright, level 3 wizard. We're going to go over here. We have access to level 2 spells. Nothing here is super important. Um, you don't want uh, concentration spells. You are going to want haste probably as your concentration spell which is why we have high constitution and we took that point in sorcerer so that we can maintain our concentration pretty easily. Uh, Misty Step, always nice. Uh, Mirror Image, if you for some reason are in a situation where you can't upcast a high level Armor of Agathis and you're almost going to die, Mirror Image can be a nice out for you in an emergency situation. So I like having it just on my roster of spells. You're a wizard, you always have backup spells that you don't always use. Alright, wizard level Four. All right, we get an extra cantrip. Pick whatever you like. At this point, it doesn't matter a whole lot. Spells, again, at this level, doesn't particularly matter a whole lot. Um, web kind of sucks in this game as a spell, because if you have a spider pet as a ranger, or if you have a druid who shapeshifts into a spider, they just get a straight-up better version. Uh, so I, I don't like taking it as a spell. Uh, see invisibility, same thing. You've got an easier way to get access to it. Uh, detect thoughts also. You have a tadpole in your head. You're good to go. Uh, any of these could work. Um, I do like Enlarge Reduce, but it is concentration. Uh, it's actually, I think, more useful outside of combat for some of those niche little spots you can crawl through. Um, I'm going to go with Hold Person because it does come in handy. Just make sure you don't use it while you're hastening yourself because you will stun yourself, waste a spell slot, and neither effect will be in effect. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, and then I'm going to go with Knock. Just, you know, maybe you don't have a thief. Maybe, maybe you need that. All right, uh, moving on. We are going to take a feat here. We are going to be taking, um, doing this not alphabetically, uh, Heavy Armor Master. This is why our strength is going to be 9 by the end. Uh, incoming damage from non-magical attacks are going to decrease by 3 while you're wearing heavy armor. So we have our shield from being an Abjuration Wizard, and then if we're wearing heavy armor, all of the damage that comes at us is going to drop by 3 right off the bat. So that's going to help us keep our armor of Agathis up longer, and it's going to keep us reflecting damage back. It's just it's just a win-win. You want Heavy Armor Master. Now, it does do non-magical, but we're going to be trying to get Opportunity attacked, which is just going to be somebody smacking us with a sword or a hammer or something. So it's going to be mostly non-magical damage that we're trying to get hitting us. All right, so we're going to go with that right there. 
Moving on up, wizard level five. Now normally, wizard level five, right? Ah, oh, fireball, wrong. All right, we are actually going to be taking, where is it? <laughs> um, seriously, where's Glyph of Warding? Hold on. You know what, I may have learned Glyph of Warding. Yeah, I learned Glyph of Warding through adding it to my spellbook with a scroll, I'm pretty sure. That's That makes sense why these are here early. Okay, so Glyph of Warding is what you want to take at this level. Um, it puts a circle on the ground, and then when an enemy steps on it, it just detonates. Uh, you can is similar to Chromatic Orb, because you can pick fire, ice, uh, lightning, thunder, acid, maybe? I don't know if it has it. I don't know. It's got a bunch of different types. It's also got a knockback one and a put them to sleep one, which is just straight up better. Well, maybe not straight up better than sleep, because sleep just happens as long as they have less hit points. This one can hit a lot of people with a lot more hit points, but there's a saving throw aspect to it. So I think it's better than sleep, but I guess technically it's not always better than sleep. Uh, but the reason for this is our shield that we get from being an Abjuration Wizard gets stronger when we cast Abjuration Spells. So if we cast a level 3 Abjuration Spell, we get 3 stacks on our shield, and that means that we will take three less points of damage from our next attack. And this is just a very nice way to constantly stack up more on our shield. All right, so Glyph of Warding is great offensively and defensively. It doesn't do as much damage as Fireball, and it doesn't have as big a range as Fireball, but it's going to be our Fireball replacement for this build because it also has a defensive aspect to it. And honestly, if we make our targets wet and we use th lightning or ice damage, it's going to deal more damage than fireball. Okay, so that's something you should take, <laughs> which apparently I learned from a scroll earlier on this save and I forgot about it. Uh, I haven't played this account in a, or this save file in a while, so my apologies there. Uh, you're going to want haste. That's going to be the main uh, spell that you maintain concentration on. And then for your next one, you could take a handful of different things. Um, this would be great if it wasn't concentration. Uh, remove curse, occasionally useful. I'm going to go with counterspell because it is an abjuration spell, so it will give us stacks. And while you don't need to use it a lot, when you do need to use it, it is fantastic to have. All right, wizard level six, total level eight. All right, our subclass feature at Wizard 6 is our Projection Ward, so that shield we get for being a uh, Abjuration Wizard, we can now project that protection onto other people in the party and reduce their damage, which is nice, but not with this build. You don't want to do that with this build. All right, coming on over to the spells we want to take. Um, because Remove Curse is an Abjuration spell, we're going to grab it and it's going to go on our set of spells that's probably not prepared, but we can swap it out when it's useful. As for our second spell at this level, I mean, pick whatever you feel like. Um, there aren't any other abjuration spells that are very good. Um, and you, again, are probably going to be focusing, or not focusing, concentrating on haste. So you don't really want other concentration spells either, which really limits what you got. I'm going to say because we're going to want our targets to be wet already, and we're going to take a lightning bolt. Uh, this is actually a fireball replacement because it does the exact same damage as fireball. It's 8d6, except this is a big line and this is a circle. And if they're wet, this does twice as much damage. So I'm just going to take that instead. Moving on to wizard 7, total level 9. Uh, this is where you're going to be either finishing act 2 or maybe starting act 3. Uh, if you're a completionist, you can finish Act 2 at level 10, but I don't think most people are going to be there. This is where we get level 4 spells. Uh, if you notice on my prepared spell list, I did have Fire Shield, uh, which I suppose I learned earlier with a scroll, so you absolutely want to take this when you get access to level 4 spells. Fire Shield is amazing for this build. Um, reads your body in flames, sheds light, uh, provides resistance to fire or cold, and it retaliates against melee damage our melee attacks. Uh, so this just is in addition to our other reflected damage. Because we want to make our targets wet, you're probably going to want to go with the cold reflection. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. I wish this was an abjuration spell. It would be the best spell for the entire build if it was. 
Um, yeah, it just goes for 10 turns, which is a pretty long time. That's probably going to be the entire combat that you're in. Uh, it's great. Pick Fire Shield, and then go with the Ice Fire Shield. Uh, now, as for our other spells here, Stone Skin's nice just because it gives you resistance, so you take half damage, which works into the build pretty well. Um, but also, it's an Abjuration spell, so even if it goes away, you still get Abjuration stacks, which is very nice. Uh, for the rest of the spells here that you get, Banishment is, I believe, the only other Abjuration spell, so it will add stacks, so we're going to take that. All right, you don't necessarily need it, but I like when we can do something productive in combat that does multiple things. So this will banish a target, get them out of the way, keep our party safe, and also give us more abjuration stacks, which is nice. Uh, just keep in mind it is concentration, so don't use it while you have haste up. And then total level 10, wizard level 8. We don't get any new spells available. We just get to pick two more from the already available ones. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, honestly, Conjure Minor Elemental. We're going to be making stuff wet. If you can throw out an Ice Demon to fly around and hit stuff, that's pretty cool. No concentration needed. It's just pretty nice. And again, keeping with the theme of iciness, we're going to go with Ice Storm. Only some of its damage is cold damage, but it hits a pretty big area. It makes the ground slick. Um... You don't always want to use this because if enemies are prone, they can't opportunity attack you, and then the bulk of your build doesn't work. Um, but it is nice to have as just an actual offensive option that isn't retaliation damage. Uh, coming up here, you could take a feat here. Um, you could go dual wielder. There's one item, one weapon, that you for sure want to have on this build. You don't really need a second one. Uh, ideally, you would probably just put a shield in your other hand, but you, there's a couple options here that you could dual-wield stuff that needs this feat in order to be dual-wielded. It's up to you. Um, you could go with uh, Sentinel, I believe? No, not Sentinel. It's something like Sentinel. Polearm Master. It's like Sentinel? Sure. They actually do go together, but that's in an actual D&D build, not a Baldur's Gate build. I guess you can make it. In. Anyway, pull our master. I don't want to get on a tangent. Um, there's a weapon that I, I don't have on this account, and I'm mad about it. Uh, skin Burster, I think it's called, or Skin Burst. I don't know. Um, you get it in the Githyanki Kresh uh, when you get to the last room with the uh, Inquisitor guy. I think it's Inquisitor. Kithrak, something. The guy with the long name who has the Psychic Blades on Honor Mode. If you get to his fight and then you turn right upon entering the room, it's over there. And it is a Halberd, I believe. This will let you use a bonus action to attack with the butt of the weapon. If that triggers that weapon, this is a great choice for this build. I don't know if it triggers that weapon. I haven't tested it yet. But this is just an option to throw in there so that you can use that one uh, more often. Even if it's just when they you know, come into range, you can opportunity attack them. It would still be pretty nice, even if you don't get the bonus action attack. But, uh, you don't need that. I'm going to go with Ability Improvement and just bump our Intelligence up, because we haven't done that yet. Also, as a side note, this is a great build to use Anti-Ethel's Hair. Uh, if you were to start with your Intelligence at 17, you'd only have to put one point there. You could take a couple of feats. Actually, are there any feats that give you Intelligence? Anyway, it would be nice to make that 17, get Anti-Ethel's Hair to bump it up to 18, and then this would get you to 20. Uh, you'd have to drop probably Dexterity down, but I think it could potentially be worth it, but this character does not have Anti-Ethel's Hair, and I already used it on this save. But that is an option. Uh, that's really the only way to get Heavy Armor Mastery and get your Intelligence up to 20 is with Anti-Ethel's Hair. Moving on. Level 11, Wizard Level 9. We get access to our Level 5 spells. Now, starting with the level 5 ones, we have a not abjuration, we have a not abjuration, a not abjuration, and uh, you're sensing a pattern. Planar binding is abjuration, and I believe that's it, actually. Yes, it is. So, we are going to take planar, planar binding, uh, which, is that concentration? It is concentration. So, this is great um, against, like, Raphael, for example. Um, you can just take one of his henchman and just be like, boom, you're fighting for me now. You could try to use it on Raphael, but 
he's probably going to save against it, but that could be funny. Um, yeah, he's got like those big flaming rocks in his place. Yeah, outside of the Raphael fight, I'm not sure how many fiends you're going to be encountering at this stage of the game. You're going to be able to use it. But, you know what? We're going to take it anyway. Uh, I don't think we're going to be fighting Raphael in this fight, but this is just while you're leveling, it's probably something you want. Um, and then Hold Monster is just amazing. Um, it is concentrated. These are both concentrations. So again, make sure you don't use them while you're concentrating on haste. Could end up very bad for you. Um, Dominate Person is also pretty good, but it has to be a humanoid. And at this stage of the game, it's like Gortash. That's about it. It's the only worthwhile humanoid that you're going to be fighting. Where this would actually be worth a level 5 spell slot. Um, and then when we level up to our last level. Wizard level 10. Total level 12. We get the subclass feature right here. Improved Abjuration. So now each time we take a short rest. The intensity of our Arcane Ward. That's our Abjuration Shield. Is going to increase equal to your wizard level. So if I take a short rest, I'm going to gain 10 stacks, which means our next attack is going to be 10 damage less on us, and we lose one stack. And then we're going to take another attack for 9 less damage, and lose one stack. Then we take another attack for 8 less damage. It's it's great. The higher up that it gets, it's like exponentially more powerful. Uh, we get another cantrip here, and to show how much it does not matter, I'm going to pick True Strike. And our last two spells, we're going to go right here. This keeps with the theme of, hey, everything is wet, and they're going to take twice as much damage. So we're going to go 8d8 cold damage. That's that's bigger than Fireball, which is good, because it's two levels higher. Uh, but it's also going to be dealing double damage, because we're going to make stuff wet. And then we have Conjure Elemental. You could go with the uh, Ice or Lightning one. Uh, either's fine. I actually like the Lightning Myrmidon, because he can stun people pretty consistently. Uh, but, you know, do whatever you want to do with that one. And it's also no concentration. All right. As for the prepared spells, what are we going to take? Uh, we're going to start off with the high level ones because they're a little bit stronger. So we, uh, if we have to cut something out, we'll cut out some level one spells. Um, I like having a Myrmidon out. It's nice. Um, I like having Hold Monster as an option. It's nice. Cone of Cold. It's nice. Uh, as for spells that are absolutely required for this build, Fire Shield. Glyph of Warding, Haste. 100%, those three are the core to this build. I know I put these three on first, but these three are your most important ones. Alright? Uh, after that, Counterspell, very nice. Uh, Misty Step, very nice. The Lightning Bolt will be very nice because things are wet. Uh, you can do Minor Elemental. I feel like when you get to late game, they miss a lot. Um, so, it's up to you. Also, more targets for your enemy to attack means they're attacking you less. So, you don't want that. Um, moving down to... Oh, I thought I could scroll more. I don't like how far down these are. Moving on to level 1 spells. Chromatic Orb and Ice Knife are just consistent keepers. Um, and then the last three... It's personal choice. I, I mean, I guess they're all personal choice. But, uh, you know... Uh, we'll go Whole Person, Mirror Image, and Banish. Alright. There we go. Now, as for gear, this is not the perfect setup. It's kind of hybridizing some stuff a little bit, but it'll work. The most important thing is you want heavy armor. Uh, this is very late game, uh, so I'm going to be spoiling where you get some stuff. So if for some reason that is something you do not want to know, don't watch this next part. Uh, so we're going to start up here. I have Savrock's Horned Helmet. You get this by killing Savrock. Um, I don't like being frightened. It kind of ruins the build. I need to move around, stay mobile, and get opportunity attacked. If I'm frightened, I can't move, so that's the main reason I got this. Also, a bonus to constitution saving throws is always nice, because we do not want to lose concentration on haste. Um, the critical hit thing and the dark vision thing, eh, they're fine. Whatever. It's not a big deal. Uh, this one right here, uh, you gain the plus one to spell save DC. That just makes them less likely to take half damage on stuff like Kona Cold, warding, or Glyph of Warding, uh, things like that. Um, the Absorb Elements is fine. It's not crucial, but it's fine. Uh, Helldusk Armor, awesome. There's a couple of armors that reduce damage. I think this is the best one. It's going to reduce all incoming damage uh, by three. 
So if I were to take 10 damage, I'm now taking 7 damage, but then I have an Arcane Ward, so I'm taking even less. It's great. Um, the Hellrider's Pride, you get this super early on. Um, it has to be another creature. It can't be yourself, which is a little upsetting, but it'll give them Blade Ward. Um, same thing with this ring over here. I have this with this necklace. So that these three items kind of work together, so I can just go, boom, Mass Healing Word. Everybody else has Blade Ward, and we all have Bless. It's very nice. Uh, and then I've got Ring of Salving, so that when I do that, it heals people up a little bit more. This guy is supposed to run in, get hit, and take no damage. He himself shouldn't need much healing, but it's nice to just have him run in, be in the center of combat, and then shoot that off when it's needed. Uh, because we want to stay mobile, get as many opportunity attacks on us as possible, I do have Boots of Speed so that I can dash as a bonus action and just run around and get those hits. As a side note, a gnome is one of the worst races for this build. Uh, purely because you do want to move around a lot so that you can get opportunity attacked. And, uh, yeah, they have less movement speed than normal. Uh, there's a pair of boots that uh, I don't think I have on this save. Yeah, I could probably go get them. But this is an old, old, old save. Like, this is when I got my Jack of All Trades achievement. This is an old one. Um, but there's a pair of boots that give you long strider permanently and uh, freedom of movement or something. It just makes difficult terrain not affect you. Those are probably better boots. Um, and then the melee weapon that you almost definitely want is going to be Defender Flail. And the reason for that is reduce incoming bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage by one. So that's just an additional amount of damage that you're not going to take. Um, and then I have Absolute's Protector. Um, I forget. Oh, also the Defender Flail you get in the Get the Yankee Crush. Uh, Absolute's Protector, I think this is the one you get in... It's either in Moonrise or you get it behind the Last Light Inn. Um, but it's a nice shield because it gives you Fire Shield Chill, which is the one that gives you Cold Damage Reflecting. Uh, it's just an extra free charge to that, so you don't need to use a spell slot over there for it. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup the party with all these other custom characters that you don't care about. Unless you're a fan of the Ginyu Force, because this guy's supposed to be Captain Ginyu. And we're going to leave camp. Alright, I'm not going to lie, I thought when I left camp, I thought the other three would stay at camp because I disbanded the party. Uh, so we're actually going to just take our guy, get him by himself. We'll just move everybody else have to keep going. outside. No one back home will ever be uh, and now because I did that uh, character respec, uh, his arcane ward is not where it was. So we're going to short rest, that's and that'll bump up to 12. And we're going to short rest going. again. It's going to bump up to 20. It does cap out at 20, um, I think. It at least caps out at 20 from short rests. Uh, then I'm going to prep. Uh, you should always armor bag at this, the highest level you can cast it at the beginning of every day. Yeah, I believe this caps out at double your wizard level. I think that's how that works. Uh, yeah, I know it's 20 at end game. I wasn't paying attention to where it caps out before end game, but I think it's just double whatever your wizard level is. Now, as for a lithid powers, um, there's really only one that's super relevant for this build, and that's going to be Stage Fright. Uh, because even if they miss, they still take, I don't want to say reflects damage, but they still take damage if they miss. So if they hit you, they get Armor Vagathus reflected. If they miss you, then they get Stage Fright damage. It's a win-win. Uh, and this is one that recharges on a short rest, which is also very good. Uh, I would also recommend getting Awakened in the Githyanki Crush so that you can use it as a bonus action. Makes it very nice. Alright, so we have our 30 temporary hit points. We, uh, are gonna, we're just going to get started. There's no other real prep that we need to do. We're already capped out on our Arcane Ward. Uh, and I don't think I really explained the Arcane Ward super well earlier. So, just one more time. Uh, I currently have it at 20. All right, when I take a short rest, it goes up by 10 because my wizard level's 10. When I do a long rest, same thing. If I cast an Abjuration spell, it increases equal to the level of the spell slot used. Right now it's at 20. So if I have 20 as my Arcane Ward and I get hit for an attack that deals 25 damage, that's going to reduce the damage by 20. So that then I only take 5 damage. 
and then that 20 on my Arcane Ward drops down to a 19. So then if I get hit by another attack for 25 damage, well, I will subtract 19 from it, and I'll only take 5 damage, and then I'll drop down to an 18 on my Arcane Ward. So if I have a 20, and I get hit for 2 attacks for 25 damage, instead of getting hit for 50 points, I will get hit for 11 points, which is awesome. Alright, and then that's with just that. The Helldusk Armor will also reduce that. This will also reduce that. I feel like there's other stuff that reduces it, and I'm just forgetting about it. It might just be a bunch of different types of heavy armor that reduce it. Oh, also, I have heavy armor mastery, so if it's non-magical damage, it will also reduce it by three. All right, so the way that we are going to test this out is I am going to go and uh, cast Fire Shield Chill on myself. I'm going to then cast Haste on myself. Going to enter turn base mode and I'm going to shoot Helsic. Okay, so I just tried doing this fight and I think I actually loaded up the wrong save because this looks like I have a war cleric load up, but whatever, it's fine. Um, so yeah, you want to. I, I did this same fight, um, but I had the Helldusk armor and a shield, so my AC was up at uh, 25, 26 after haste. Um, and that's just too high. I wasn't getting hit and reflecting back damage. So we're going to do this with the adamantine splint armor. So we're going to have a little bit less AC, no shield, less AC. And we're going to try it like that. Uh, now you do want to cast Armor of Agathis on yourself beginning of every day. And just uh, start things off like that. Uh, and if you're not already capped out on Arcane Ward, that will give you more Arcane Ward stacks. All right, so we're just going to get started here. After you get uh, Armor of Agathis cast, I'm just going to start combat here and uh, see how this goes. All right, so if you didn't know, when you attack Helsic, she summons a bunch of gold people. And uh, they, they try to kill you. All right, so we're going to go with Create Water. I think level 4 should hit all these guys. Yeah, I would go three, but those two minotaurs on the outside kind of need that full, full range right there. Yeah, I definitely loaded up the wrong save because I don't have lightning bolt. This is a war cleric one. Whatever, it's fine. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and just get opportunity attacked as much as possible. Into the bloody fray. All right, uh, no, I don't want shield. Boom, all right, so Arcane Ward made me take zero damage. He took 30 damage. He's wet, he should have taken more, but whatever. And then if I go right there, okay, I was hoping he would opportunity attack me as well. All right, this is the problem I was having when I tried it with higher ACs, everything was missing me, and I wasn't able to reflect any damage that way. Boom! Okay, Arcane Ward, I took zero damage, he took 30. Uh, these are ranged attacks, they won't have anything reflected, so I am going to shield that. Ooh, I got knocked prone. It's actually good, they'll be more likely to hit me. Oh, she's going to heal him, okay, okay. Don't know what that one does, doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to be able to attack me there. All right, so uh, I did not put up that shield. So we're gonna do fire shield shield. All right, all right, and then uh, I don't think there is an end. Then I think we're just gonna start running around trying to get opportunity attacks now. All right, boom! Reflected that damage. Reflected that damage. Arcane Ward is at 16 now. Uh, so. Uh, we're, we're just going to keep going. 16 is still fine. I'm not going to get too worried about it until our temporary hit points start to drop. Now, he's a big boy. That might... No? Okay, I was going to say that might hurt. Boom. Alright, 60 and then 16. So he took double damage from being wet. But that guy didn't. That's weird. Okay. So now my Arcane Ward is down to 15. Uh, so I, I should probably bump that up, but now when we get attacked, we're going to take 15 less damage. That's going to make us take uh, 17 less heavy armor mastery. We're going to take 20 less. That's going to be 21 less. So we're taking 21 less damage. We've lost three of our temporary hit points so far. All right. 
Uh, I'm just gonna stay right there and hope they all attack me. And I'm prone, so now, now they're gonna actually hit. Yeah. Still got 27 hit points, one of our temporary hit points. 26 temporary hit points. Oh man, I took one point of damage. Alright, it is starting to drop. I'm at 21 now. Which makes sense. Our arcane ward dropped down to 11, so I've been hitting nine times. Boom, okay. Took a little bit. He took a lot of bit. Alright, so now uh, we're at 10 on our arcane ward. So, our current objective should be to bring that back up as high as we can and then get opportunity attacked some more. Um, now, I could transition to a stage fright type of uh, tactic here, mid fight. Uh, where I would have them all be at disadvantage when they attack me, but then if they miss me, then they take 2d6 psychic damage. That's also pretty good. Alright, uh, that's not what I'm going to do, though. Uh, but that's just something that is an option I wanted to uh, point out. There. Actually, I might do that, looking at what I uh, have as an option here. Uh, I really want to upcast Glyph of Warding and just do that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's go with uh, Stone Skin. It's going to make me take half damage from their stuff because it is non magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. And I only have 13 temporary hit points, which isn't great. I do want to save at least one of these level 5 spell slots to recast Armor Vag at this if I need to. And I'm just going to come over here and not use Shield. Okay, Arcane Shield, I took 0 damage, 0 damage. They took 60, 60, and 10 from the Fire Shield. So these two Minotaurs are both almost dead, and I have not attacked them. <laughs> the one Imp guy is dead. Okay. And nope. Alright, and yeah, he took... Yeah, so they are killing themselves trying to kill me. All right, and that's that's the gist of how this build goes. Now, I'm doing this with just him. I've got my other three party members out here doing well, nothing. So much peace. All right, um, and I'm not even using stuff that's like crowd control-y. I'm literally just running around getting opportunity attacked. Uh, from here, because this is down to 10, uh, I am going to use Stage Fright. Where's Helsic? Can I get her in that radius? Yeah. So... She saved, all these guys did not. So now when they attack me, if they miss, they're going to take 2d6 uh, psychic damage. And if they hit, then they take the same uh, 30 points of cold damage. Uh, it does look like the wet status is starting to wear off, though. Uh, yeah, so miss, they're taking 2d6. These guys are probably going to hit. I'm actually going to shield, because it's ranged attacks. And there's only one more. Oops, there's only one more Minotaur attack. Before it's my turn again, and the shield wears off. But he isn't even attacking. Cool. Alright, so now, uh, because my Arcane Ward is down to 9, uh, this is where having haste would actually come in handy, but then they'd be missing me more, and uh, I don't want that. Uh, so I'm going to go with. Uh, Okay, hold on, because if I had haste, I could use two normal actions. I don't have that option right now. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to go Lift of Warding. Screw it, yeah. Lift of Warding, hold. Try to get both Minotaurs in there. Trying to not get myself in there. Let's go with the tactical view overhead. That's O on the keyboard, if you didn't know. Not a lot of people use this, I don't think. At least they don't talk about it online. There we go. My arcane ward went up, and uh, it killed something. So now that I do have stage fright on, I believe all of these guys, I'm gonna use armor of or not, or a shield of faith to up my AC, and just kind of hope that they all miss now. Oops, so now they're taking two d6 psychic damage when they miss. That one died from the psychic damage, and that's basically how this guy goes. All right, now some of these guys are close to dead. Uh, the two up top really aren't. Uh, yeah, if you have ranged enemies, that's where the rest of your party comes in. Um, yeah, these guys 7 and 18 health. Like, if they attack me here, they are... I probably could have just ran by, got opportunity attacked, and killed them that way. Boom. All right, now I did lose the last bit of my temporary hit points. So the armor of Agatha's damage now is down, 
and I need to recast Armor of Agathis. Alright. But uh, so far, this is doing an okay job at showing how this works. Yeah. Okay, whatever. He's gonna get healed up. Alright, I don't know where. The oh, that came from Fire Shield. I forgot. There's no Armor of Agathis, but there's still Fire Shield going off. Alright, so now I am going to upcast Armor of Agathis once again, and it's going to boost my Arcane Ward from 8, should go up to 13. 13, okay, beautiful, beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just going to actually dash. Do they still have, uh, they do not, uh, he still has Stage Fright. Alright, let's see if I can get Opportunity Attack by these guys. Not let's see if I can get up here. Let's see if they can successfully hit me, I guess is what I was really trying to get at. Is he not? Oh, he's got a crossbow. That's why he's not opportunity attacking. And hell sick. Boom. 25 and 6. So I'm not going to finish this fight. I'm just going to leave it at that uh, because we killed the two big minotaurs. And, uh, you know, I could easily just use cantrips and kill these guys from here. But that's the gist of the build. That is your retribution style uh, wizard tank. Um, and I did that very aggressively. I got attacked very aggressively. Um, but that's how he works. Uh, it's fun. It's not particularly good. <laughs> uh, you won't die. But when you have your other teammates going around and you have summons out, like you don't get attacked very often. You need to run around and get opportunity attacked in order for this to work. Um, and sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, and, like, I had to get a weaker armor and get rid of my shield and not use haste in order for them to actually be able to hit me. When I did this the first time, I was at 26 AC, and they were just missing constantly. It wasn't actually showing off the uh, armor of Agathus potential. But that is our Retribution Wizard build, courtesy of our gnome wizard Goobstin over here. All right. So thanks for watching. Oh, also, I don't know why I loaded up the wrong save after the respec. Um, I, I do have a War Priest one on him. That's what he was. And I did a respec and changed him to Tempest. And then I loaded up the one that didn't have Tempest. So I could also be reflecting more lightning damage once per round as well. Uh, so it could be reflecting even more damage back. Uh, but that is it for this one. I will see you guys in my next video of me doing weird stuff on BG3 and uploading it to YouTube. Thanks for watching.